Hello, everyone, and welcome to this briefing at the Jerusalem Press Club. I'm Talia Dekel, CEO. The news of six Israelis murdered in captivity by Hamas, in addition to the execution of three police officers near Hebron at the beginning of the week, has shocked the nation. Meanwhile, pressure both within the country and without raises questions over the government's next steps in this war nearly a year into it. Our guest today is Likud member of Knesset, Amit Halevi, a member of the Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee and head of the Subcommittee on the Perception of Power and Force Building. I hope I got that right. Uh, thank you for joining us. I know you're very busy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me here. And I'm glad to be here and to present, uh, you know, my angle about all the things that you have just reminded. And we're, we're looking forward to hearing it. Uh, before we tackle our main topic for this briefing, uh, the IDF operations in the West Bank in Judea and Samaria, I would like to ask about the breaking news this morning. We understand that one of the October 7th commanders has been taken out. Uh, and he was the one that led the massacre in Kibbutz Nativa Sara, uh, where he was famously uh, seen gleefully sipping soda after slaughtering uh, Giltasa in front of his children, uh, who horrifically at the same time uh, lost a son in Kibbutz Zikim, uh, I'm sorry, in, in, uh, in Zikim Beach while he was fishing also by terrorists. Can you elaborate just a, a, for a minute on this operation from today? Um... <clears throat> I mean, uh, really, really, there's not uh, uh, there's not something really news. I mean, we are in Gaza. We are doing uh, our operation in Gaza. Uh, this uh, murderer, uh, if I have a, a, a something to to comment about, have a serious comment about this, uh, the fact that the IDF has uh, eliminated this uh, murder is the fact that he, as you as you mentioned, he drank. I think it was a coke, not. Uh, not a soda, but uh, it's the same. I mean, we have deal here, not with even not, even not with regular murders, but with culture. Uh, think about this picture that this guy is uh, uh, drinking uh, a coal, a coke, and and uh, murdering the the father in front of the eyes of his children. And this is the radical culture of these radical Muslims. And I think this is the real front that Israel. Uh, is uh, in in these days. I mean, our soldiers are fighting, and this uh, operation that we, we killed him is just uh, you know it's small small act that uh, part of of the war in this culture. It's not war against individuals. It's important to emphasize this because our soldiers are fighting in Rafa and in Gaza, not only for Tel Aviv or Jerusalem. We are fighting for Washington, for Rome, for Paris because this. Uh, uh, this radical culture is actually threat the whole world, the whole free world. And that's why the fact of this murder that is drinking the cola, uh, you know, during his murdering the, the, the father in front of his kids, this is exactly the picture of this culture that actually aim to not only to, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not threat only the uh, liberation of our country, it's actually threat the liberation of every human being, every individual, because that's exactly the, if you, can, you know, every one of us can read the covenant of Hamas. Uh, it's not something secret. You don't, you shouldn't be in the intelligence of the IDF. You can see it. It's very clear. And, um, and this is exactly the same, you know, the same culture that beheaded the, the British soldier a few years ago and uh, did it to our soldiers and to our people. And the journalist as well. And the journalist as well. That's why. That's why I think uh, you know we, we did it today. But it, it's not real news. It's uh, uh, the real news will be when the the, the whole free world will join uh, this part in the in the in the in the real threat of the of of the of our modern world. I, I must tell you something personally. You know when I was student in high school and we have been taught about the uh, about the uh, second world war and actually in my eyes we are in the same situation i mean there is a state i'm talking about the iranian regime uh, talia uh, that actually has the same characters like uh, 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 like the nazis regime then i mean it has a racist and totalitarian vision the, never mind if you are talking about the the school of thought of the Shi'an 
you know, Shian school of thought or the Sunnian. Both of them, those both uh, streams in the in the Muslim world, I'm, uh, the radical. I'm not talking about the whole Muslims, of course. I'm talking about these radicals. Regimes of the never mind if it's the Sunnian or, or or the Shian, both of them actually want to take over the whole world. This is it. This is there. I mean, to take a, and it's not the Aryan race now. It's the Muslim concept or the Muslim religion concept, but it's the same. I mean, you have only you know two options: or to be Muslim, or to 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 be die, or to you know maybe there is a. A specific version for Christian and Jews that they can be a second uh, class of uh, citizens. That's what we have today. And I, as a kid, you know, when I was in high school, and I thought, wow, if I was there in those times, if I was in the, in the, in the 30s and 40s of the last uh, century, I would go to the president of that state. I would convince somebody this is the same situation today. I mean, we have a state, it has inspiration to destroy Israel, it has inspiration to take over the whole world. This is the vision. It's cut clear, and I think we all need to, you know, to join forces in order to to fight in this uh, threat of our world today. This is actually the mission of our generation, in in my eyes. Very, very clear, and I think we'll get a little bit to uh, Israel's diplomatic efforts uh, on that front a little bit later. Um, just in terms of managing the war itself, because obviously this is the number one thing on everyone's minds. Uh, yesterday, you published an op-ed in the Mida online magazine where you said the only option to defeat Hamas and release the remaining hostages is to return to high-intensity warfare in Gaza. Um, does this mean that Hamas is much further away from defeat in contrast to what we've been hearing from the defense echelon? First of all, yes. I mean, we have uh, we still have a long way in order to defeat Hamas in, in real terms of, of uh, defeat an enemy. Uh, Hamas, unfortunately, still control most of the population and most of the land, uh, uh, unfortunately, and uh, not according to the international law. You know, in international law, uh, in this kind of uh, situation, when uh, you have uh, you, you have a fear that the, the humanitarian aid will get into the hands of the enemy, uh, you should make, you can make uh, uh, effective uh, siege and not to give the enemy to be, you know, uh, to be strong and to give him to, today. A situation. The status today is the Hamas actually gives the humanitarian aid. It's not only food uh, to the population. In via this, he actually control the population. That's why he can recruit uh, fighters, soldiers to his army. That's why he has a he have uh, he has a backup from the population. Uh, the civic areas became actually became, uh, uh, in fact, they are, they are the military uh, headquarters, uh, as you can see, daily basis in the schools, in the medicine uh, buildings and others. So we must made serious change in our operational uh, program in order to take the strategic control from Hamas to our hand. So still we have a long way in order to defeat Hamas. But what I said in this article, and I and repeat now, Hamas in in this situation, in this status, it doesn't has any real interest to release the hostages. As you know, Sinwar doesn't uh, treat the hostages as human being. They are only an uh, instrumental tool in his jihad war. So from his eyes, he must, uh, uh, and it's it's very basic of you know of uh, game theory. You, you should not be professor for game theory to understand it. Uh, if Sinuar feels that the international sphere is in his side and, and make the pressure on Israel, if he knows that he has humanitarian aid, you know, for many years uh, forth from today, and uh, if he sees also that he can even influence the Israeli society, you know, include the strike that was yesterday. So he doesn't have any interest to make a deal, what he called hudna. We call it in the Western uh, word deal, but it's actually hudna. And one more thing I must tell you, Talia, also from the religious point of view, that he actually, forbi it's forbidden. Uh, he doesn't allow to make a deal if he's in a good uh, shape, if he's in a good uh, status from the military point of view. Only, but only, according to the, to the religious uh, 
uh, rules of of the of the Muslim of of this Muslim uh, uh, school of thought. Only when he is weak, what they called in Arabic durth al I mean the the weakness of the of the believers. Only when he is in this status, he is allowed to make a deal uh, in order to uh, you know to uh, release the pressure to reorganize the his powers and and so forth and that's exactly what happened in the first deal why did he do the first deal he did it because only because he was under pressure only because he thought it didn't happen i'm so uh, unfortunately he thought that the idf will take over the whole strip the whole gaza strip yes and he, and the international mood was against him he must made the start him he thought that he must have made the stop to reorganize his power to stop the movement of the idf and all the power that we uh, in these in those days we presented so the only interest what i'm saying here are two reasons first of all we must cause him interest to do a deal he will not do it just from good willing and in this in today's status we are not uh, uh, actually creating the circumstances that uh, uh, will uh, cause him to do this deal. And second, it's also from the religious point of view. We must, that's why we must actually restart the, um, you know, the um, uh, serious, uh, 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 not uh, moderate operations and uh, specific, uh, in specific places, but we must get back to a, a serious war in terms of uh, in the terms that Hamas understand and I think this is the only way not only for our security but for the security of the hostages because this is the way that will cause him to to think about deal okay but uh, you mentioned uh, the strikes uh, the other day uh, it was yesterday actually um, and um, the fact that that they're trying to pressure the Israeli public as well into pressuring uh, for a deal um, we have been told for over a year that this will take at least a year. Uh, the Israeli public is growing weary. It's impacting resilience. How long do you think, um, you know, the public will be able to maintain support uh, for the current operation, especially now when you're talking about something that's even more intense than what we've seen, uh, which of course will cause more soldiers falling, uh, which is devastating, of course, to every family in this country. Look, Talia, I think that the majority of our people understand what we are standing. Uh, I mean, I mean, what uh, uh, what is the what is our enemy, uh, and uh, what we should do. I think the majority of our people understand that we can't uh, keep uh, you know business as usual after October seven. And uh, I thought it before October seven, but I think many, and again, I think the majority of our people understand that it's not uh, you know it's not a territory conflict it's not something that can be solved by uh, economy or or trade or economy like like by the way our the heads of our security system uh, thought before october 7 i can say it as a member of the uh, security the, the defense and foreign affairs committee in the knesset i mean we we have been told uh, time after time before October 7 that it's only a question of money and uh, Hamas has his interest and there's no doubt about it that there will not be any attack from the Hamas organization because they want money and Sinuhar has his uh, accountant, uh, account, uh, bank account in, in French and he has the companies in Africa and he have uh, real estate in America and he have uh, you know a company in Turkey in, in the stock markets too, and all those Things are actually the the, econ the, the economy reason that uh, there will not be any attack. And this concept of uh, actually neo-Marxist concept that actually um, think about the human being only as a economy uh, economy uh, human being and not uh, you know and and decrease the importance of identity, religious national identity, religious identity. That's part of our problem. I think the majority of our people know today what is Hamas. Uh, you know, after uh, September 11, one of the books that were actually um, uh, sold out in, in Manhattan was the Quran. People want to understand what's going on. What gives the people 
uh, in our world to go to the World Trade Center and to do what they did. It happened in Israel also. People, I think, more deeply thought about what is Hamas. They read the covenant. They understand that we have here deal with people that, as I said in the beginning, it's not only Israeli people, uh, problem. They want to take over the world. They have a religious vision, very unmoral. They are actually infidels. Yes, they are not believers because they have a, a very, uh, it's not extreme, it's very um, how would you say it? Uh, uh, distorted. Distorted, exactly. Thank you. Very distorted uh, uh, religious uh, uh, belief and, and vision. And uh, and that's why if this war will not end in a total victory, as our Prime Minister defined, uh, it will be not only a disaster for Israel, it will be a catastrophe for the whole world. I mean, if this, they will be a model. They now a model. Sinuar is uh, as a Din al-Qassam all over the world. Over the, over the, the, I mean, in the many, largest play, uh, parts of the, of the Muslim world, especially in the extremists. And uh, we will find ourselves, and, and we are in a tough neighborhood. I mean, all the neighbors are, you know, they're standing and looking. So That's let's it. talk about some of the other neighbors. I want to make sure we, we leave time for that. Um, moving on to the West Bank, to Judea and Samaria, we've seen an intensification of fighting uh, in the northern part uh, and attempted terror attacks, including car bombs being planted next to school buses and even the execution of police, as we previously discussed. Um, will the army scale up its activities there to deal with the growing threat? How do you see this playing out? Yes, we started a few days ago. We started this operation. It has a name, never mind the name. But the, what's what's important is the is the principle. And the, I, I again, I must tell you honestly, not to not to repeat our mistakes before October seven. Janine is small Gaza. Ramallah is small Gaza. I'm talking about the infrastructure. I'm not talking about a specific, uh, you know, uh, organization or specific uh, uh, activities here or there. In general, if you look about the infrastructure, if you look about the polls, yes, Shkaki polls in the beginning, after October 7, that 84% of the population actually supported the massacre. If you look about every secretary of Fatah movement, a movement, when we're talking about the Palestinian Authority, I think... Uh, uh, the respectable people here, um, I'm sure they know it. There is not really Palestinian authority. I mean, there is Fatah movement, which this is the not only the legal uh, core of the base of the Palestinian authority. This is the, you know, Mahmoud Abbas, uh, Abu Mazen. He is the chairman of the Fatah. That gives him also the, the, the not only the ability, but also from the legal point of view in their uh, institutions to be the head of the Palestinian Authority. This is part of the... So when, when we see, when we saw <clears throat> all the secretaries of the Fatah movement in Ramallah, in Jenin, in Hebron, in Nablus, in Shechem, all of them publicly and loudly support, they supported in the massacre. So this is the infrastructure. When we hear in the mosques, weekly basis and i'm saying it as a as a member of uh, of the uh, foreign affairs and security committee we 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 get uh, we got and we get uh, these reports i mean the religious the social uh, um, and the ideological infrastructure in the in the territories where the palestinian authority is actually hamas same thing leave the cover names it's never mind the organization just look on the goals, on the methods, on the education. That's what we need to ask. That's what we ask ourselves. I'm ahead also. I was. Uh, I'm a former head of the subcommittee in the educational committee of, uh, of, of, of our parliament that actually deals with the uh, studies programs in the Palestinian Authority and in the west in, and in the east side of Jerusalem. And I can tell you this is the same infrastructure. I mean, demonization of the Jewish people, delegitimization of the state of Israel, supporting terror. That's the important thing, Talia. I mean, what will be the future with these people? And I want to tell you one more thing. Victory of Israel, in, also in Jenin and in Ramallah, because it's the, same, it's the same infrastructure, will be also victory for them. I mean, what is the future of the students, of uh, young students, of the ch children in Ramallah and Jenin? What is their future? Terror 
and and uh, evil or justice and science and the charity what is the future what do we want that we, they will grow for for what for which for which future I mean in in our neighborhood and I think we have responsibility and unfortunately you know maybe my friends in the left parties honestly uh you know send our hand for peace with with but we can see the outcomes also in Jenin also in Ramal that's why we started this operation and uh, there was a discussion yesterday in the security committee and um, I hope that the goals of this operation will not be only tactical goals but strategic goals in order to eliminate uh, uh, eliminated the this infrastructure not only to you know to hurt the few terrorists we have problem of infrastructure and not only with individuals so on top of the infrastructure and on top of the individuals which of course we're talking about the issues of incitement and education at the end of the day these individuals are using arms that are getting to them uh could you share a little bit of information on that we know that over the weekend an rpg was used uh, against troops and these are things that we haven't seen in the west bank in the past uh how is how is the army going to be dealing with these new kinds of threats? We have two sources of this weapon and, uh, and the uh, large picture of the infrastructure that I don't want that we will miss it because this is the, the major problem. But we have two sources of these weapons. We have the smuggling from the border, especially recently uh, in the recent years from the Jordan border. Uh, in the north and in the, in the south of this border, we have smuggling in in, in uh, large amounts of uh, of uh, transportations and um it the the source is iran i mean the iranian regime it was published already the iranian regime made makes uh, a, a serious effort in order to smuggle the uh, these weapons into judea and samaria uh, through the jordanian uh, uh, border uh, it's part by the way of a serious work uh, of the Iranian regime in Jordan at all. I mean, Jordan is one of the targets of the Iranian regime to collapse, to make this uh, a Jordanian regime to be collapsed. This is a formal uh, target of the Iranian regime, part of the, you know, taking over the whole area around Israel, not only what they did in the Syria, Syria and, and Lebanon, but also in uh, Jordan and every place they are doing it in Iraq, in Jordan, in uh, in Iraq, in Syria, in Lebanon, they are bringing uh, only uh, war, evil, and terror to those uh, places. Uh, I don't need to, uh, elaborate, to explain it here it's about Lebanon and about Iraq, of course. So I mean, this is one source: the smuggling from the Jordan uh, border, and the other one, which is not less important, maybe it's more important. This is self producing. I mean, we discovered that in Jenin, in Ramallah, there is a serious military industry that actually produced for many years those, uh, it's not only missiles like you mentioned, it's also uh, bombs, it's also it's diff uh, uh, various of, uh, of um, weapons. Uh, and I think this is our target. I mean, uh, we need also to block, of course, the, the, the smuggling from, from, from the Jordanian border, and we're doing it. But uh, we need to also, to, this is one of the goals of this operation, to get the, the industry infrastructure. But again, in one sentence, I want to tell you this also, which is very important, if we don't, uh, if there will not be a change in the educational and the political uh, sphere in the in Judea and Samaria, we will be in the same problem. The 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 people we started with this uh, what's his name uh, Ahmed Fozi that uh, drank the coke during he murdered uh, Gil Tassa. Yes, he was a, a good graduate of the instit educational institutions in in Gaza. He was a bad man. He was a monster. But he was a good student, a good graduate. I mean that this is exactly the studies in uh, uh, Hamas uh, in uh, educational institutions, and same same in the Palestinian Authority, the same authority that actually sponsored this murder. By the way, till today, they sponsor the murders in Gaza, in Judea and Samaria. They educate, as I mentioned. So 
we are in the middle of operation in Judea and Samaria. I hope we will um, put our hands on the military infrastructure, as I said, the industry of the weapons and uh, and others. But the real problem is in the mosques, current mosques. There can be other mosques, but today mosques and today religious and ideological and educational infrastructure, this is the real target of this war. Thank you for that. Um, the Prime Minister yesterday kind of gave a 101 on uh, the Philadelphia corridor to the Israeli public. Um, can you tell us what Israel is proposing in terms of deployment along the corridor? Uh, one reporter is asking if you can share information on troop numbers or positions, uh, and would this uh, deployment include tunnel detection equipment and, and or missions? Uh, I actually can't add over what the Prime Minister said yesterday, include what he mentioned about the compromise that he agreed actually to uh, decrease our powers there, not to put them in the specific positions. I think this is the, compri the, the compromise that he agreed in uh, August 16, I think. But never mind, it's it's all... Uh, what's, the, what's happening right now is the fact that our Prime Minister is actually standing uh, 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 for the minimum... Yes, the minimum line, the red line of Philadelphia. And that should be very clear. I mean, uh, uh, we cannot allow ourselves, Israel cannot allow itself to repeat the, the concept that was before October 7, the technological tools or others, whoever it will be, Egyptians, Americans, whoever, will be in charge of our security. It didn't stand... It never will be, it, it cannot stand, I mean, in our neighborhood. And uh, and to do it after, you know, 1,500 people that were murdered brutally, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's unacceptable in my mind. It's unacceptable from, uh, in my uh, consciousness. I mean, it's, it's uh, we can't uh, afford this for ourselves. And the prime minister is under... Unbelievable pressure. I don't think there was such international pressure of uh, our prime minister never ever since our state was established. And um, I think it's very important. He said he said very you know clear and uh, and important things. This is our security. We're a sovereign state. The the Philadelphia corridor is it's just one element. By the way, uh, they are fighting on this, so that's why it's uh, but. In any uh, hostages deal, uh, we cannot allow ourselves. It, it's actually, I, I tell you, I, <clears throat> allow me to 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 phrase it in this way: the the kids of the hostages, the kids of the the same hostages, by the way, the kids of the hostages, the kids of Gil Tasa that were murdered by this uh, Fozzi Muhammad. Uh, in the next uh, attack, that undoubtedly will be. Undoubtedly, will be because this is the goal of the whole Hamas. It's never mind if the the mayor of Khan Yunis, all this machine, it's a machine of uh, uh, murdering the Jewish people and destruction of Israel. This is the public goal, and there is no doubt about it. There will be another attack, and in this attack, I, I'm sure it will not get into Jerusalem or Tel Aviv, but it will get to Be'eri and Near Oz. And if we if we do allow the Philadelphia corridor to be again in the hands of Hamas together with the Egyptian side, not together, never mind. That's why the insist of the Prime Minister is essential and the fact that our, I'm, I'm saying it, uh, uh, that our Minister of Defense and the heads of the security systems in Israel are actually supporting this option, it's unbelievable, it's unacceptable not only on the government, every child in the Middle East knows exactly what will be in this corridor and in Rafa uh, transportation, in Rafa um, uh, transportation uh, point, if it uh, do, uh, you know, if it in the in, in Hamas hands. So it, it, I, in my eyes, it's simple. I mean, uh, all the all the noises are only from political issues. It's very simple, and it's for the hostages, as I said in the beginning. It's not only for the security of Israel. It's not only the political issue of our international border. It's all also, and maybe first thing, it's for the hostages. If we want the hostages home, we must make a pressure over Sinwar. The, the current negotiation actually calls him one thing. Keep the negotiation, never sign. Just keep the negotiation. It makes, it split the Israeli society. Don't sign. 
This is the what we cause in our own hands, and that must be stopped. We we are out of time, but there are a few more questions that have come in. So, with your permission, I will I will try to ask as many as possible before we really really are out of time. Um, it you mentioned the international pressure on the prime minister, um, which you say is uh, is unprecedented, um, and. At the beginning of your your talk, you also discussed uh, the fact that Israel needs to do a better job educating um, its its allies as to the larger the larger issues here. Um, we just heard yesterday from President Biden himself saying that Netanyahu is not doing enough uh, for a ceasefire deal. Um, how do you respond to that? How is Israel supposed to maintain international support for what you're calling for, which is essentially a much deeper? more difficult and longer campaign in Gaza? I think the Prime Minister gave a very clear answer about it. I mean, he quoted what Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State uh, in the United States, actually mentioned a, a few months ago, and then a few weeks ago, and then a few days ago. I mean, time after time, the, the leaders of the, the United States of America actually uh, emphasized publicly that Israel did the serious, uh, you know, uh, serious um, suggestions uh, that actually in, uh, uh, in this negotiation and they expect the Hamas uh, side to, to, to behave the same and to make their, uh, uh, in this way also. But uh, uh, I don't think that nothing has, I, I, I'm, as, as the Prime Minister said, nothing has been changed in the last five days. I mean, all those in, in all those uh, times that, that Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, accepted many of the American suggestions and the Hamas said no, and I, I am telling you the truth, and I'm sorry that the President of the United States maybe doesn't understand it, maybe. This way caused the Hamas, as I said before, to insist and not to sign on the agreement. It's exactly the opposite. If you don't give, uh, again, it's, it's game theory. It's very simple. If Hamas feels that he is on board, he has all the he has controlled the population, he has the international backing to, to his position, and nobody actually, when the president uh, of the United States said Netanyahu doesn't do enough, when he knows that Netanyahu's time after time agreed to this uh, American suggestion, and again, Anthony Blinken said it by himself. I mean, it's not a secret. And he doesn't actually make the pressure over Hamas. He actually give the legitimation to Hamas to keep the, the current status and not to sign the deal because this is interest. Hamas doesn't treat the hostages as human being. They are only instrumental tools in his jihad war. That's very simply. Maybe we from time to time confuse because we think uh, on them what we think on ourselves as Western uh, people, this is not the situation. It's a total different concept and total different considerations from them. And that's why we need to cause them to make a deal. And this is the, the, exactly what happened in the first deal. They were under pressure. When we release the pressure, we will not get the, the, the result that we want. Understood. Uh, just two last questions, if that's OK. Um, one on Gaza and one on the West Bank. Um, we saw yesterday uh, uh, Foreign Minister Israel Katz uh, vowed to punish Hamas for executing the hostages earlier in the week. Uh, was this morning's uh, targeted killing the, uh, the, the retribution or should we expect something much larger? And what can Israel possibly do and maintain its status as an international uh, law-abiding liberal democracy uh, in such a case? I think this is the... the... The liberal, the real liberal action is to take out and to eliminate those people that actually takes take our take themselves out of the humanity. These murderers, the people that actually threat our world, exactly as the Nazis regime. It's I, I I urge you to think about it. It's the same school of thought, different maybe, uh, uh, different information, different uh, uh, you know details, but. It's the same uh, uh, mainstream of uh, racist and totalitarian uh, way of thinking. It, uh, also in their people, you know, over their people and in their states, in their countries, and uh, also for us and for the whole world. That's why uh, this operation of uh, killing this uh, guy, it's, it's only, it's also, it's only small detail in what we need to do, what we really need to do. And this is also criticism 
uh, uh, my criticism of uh, over our government. I think we need to change the IDF operation in Gaza. We must divide Gaza to much more, uh, to split it, not only in Netzarim. We must uh, uh, take our take uh, on ourselves the the humanitarian aid when we give Hamas to give it to the population. Hamas actually, as I said before, recruit more soldiers, has food. It's unacceptable in the international law. Israel actually, under the international pressure, um, do does uh, in my eyes. Not enough in order to 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 end this war with with total victory. If we want total victory, we need to implement what the cabinet actually defined in the first day, destroying the uh, the military and civic abilities of the Hamas. Today uh, uh, we have a long way in order to achieve it, and in order to achieve it, we need to actually to move from you know, operation to control, not a specific operation in that place or other place in Gaza Strip, but to take over Gaza Strip. Uh, uh, and uh, you cannot defeat a terror if you're not control the land and the population. It's impossible. And I'm saying it again, the 1.5 or something like that, people in Gaza Strip were under extreme indoctrination in the last, at least in the last 17 years, Talia. And that's why you cannot take off the terror if you not take over the population and the land. And today, we, we, they must have a, a, a serious process in order to, uh, to, to, to make a fundamental change. The same thing was in Japan, the same thing was in Germany. And when America, when the you, you mentioned the United States, when the United States did it in Iraq and in Afghanistan, actually they wanted to take over, but not really to take over. So as you saw in Afghanistan, with the uh, we are here in the you know it was the Tal Taliban regime, and it all went back to to, to 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 the bad status of today. And if we want to make a fundamental change, and Israel has no Atlantic Ocean. Yes, it's here. And if we want to make a fundamental change, and we must do a fundamental change, that's what our people, that's what our, what our security is actually uh, demand. So we must uh, take over the land and the population in order that the studies materials will be different, in order that the people that will be appointed will be different today, this is not the situation. We must have a, a, a change, a serious change in our operational mode in order to uh, bring ourselves to the to the targets of uh, uh, the goals of this war. I think you've opened an entirely new conversation up on what that looks like in terms of uh, controlling the land and the population. But unfortunately, we don't have that time. I will, however, ask one uh, one more question that's been sent by a reporter from Bloomberg. Um, if you can tell us what kind of weapons specifically are being smuggled in from Jordan, and if you can tell us what percentage of such smuggling is being maybe prevented by the Jordanian security forces. Mm. Um, I can check. I don't know the percent percentage. I mean, what uh, maybe what, general trend? What is prevented by the Jordanian? What by, by our forces? Uh, I'm not familiar with these details. I can say that there are actually all the kinds of weapons. I mean, not only. Uh, not only uh, the regular um, uh, guns and uh, uh, but we're talking also about um, uh, missiles like you mentioned uh, also missiles missiles and uh, how do you say in uh, that anti-tank anti-tank like anti-tank exactly anti-tank but many types of anti-tanks and also and also uh, bombs I mean mitane uh, nefets what we call the I'm talking Explos about IEDs. IEDs, okay. So there, there were dozens, and uh, I think much more than dozens, uh, that uh, were smuggled by try to be smuggled. And I'm, I'm sure we didn't catch all of them. I mean, uh, but as I said, be besides this, we have the, the self industry in Judea and Samaria. And, uh, I, and that's, by the way, the, the method of Iranian regime in the recent years. It's also in Yemen. They in the beginning they smuggled 
the, the, the weapons, and then they moved to the method that they actually bring the experts and uh, and uh, and and it's all been done uh, self-made and uh, that, that by the way that was in Gaza you you saw the El Burj industry and uh, it's all over Gaza I mean they brought the experts the Iranian experts by the way via Sinai in the tunnels and they um, and that's the way it's been done in Gaza in Yemen in Syria and Lebanon uh, uh, many years uh, already. Right, it was, wasn't made up yesterday. Uh, M.K. Amit Alevi, member of the Foreign Affairs and Defense Committee and head of the Subcommittee on the Perception of Power and Force Building. Thank you very much for your time today and I hope that our next conversation will be during better days. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. And if I allow, uh, uh, regarding the new uh, issue, as you said, so I published uh, five articles regarding under the title that the uh, five things you need to know in order to defeat or in order to have a total victory. So uh, I will send you and uh, you can share it. And uh, I think it will, it will make clear some things about the the, the last uh, thing that I've just said. Sure, we'll be happy to share it with uh, with our uh, members. Uh, I'd like to thank also my colleague Matias Sakal for facilitating this briefing, as well as Jonathan Beck and Ali Noor for producing the event. And just to remind our viewers that the recordings of these briefings are available on our YouTube channel. Thank you again. Have a good day, everybody.